by its cover. So I thought that we could do another ranking, like a tier ranking video today, and I thought maybe what we could do is that I would take the books that made my top 10 lists for the last three years, my total best of, not like the million end of the year videos, like the true like best of 2017, top 10 of 2018, top 10 of 2019, so 30-ish because there was a couple of ties. I thought we could take those and I thought I would rank them by how much I stand by where I ha like having them on those lists, which ones I like stand by having them on a best of the year, which ones are like all time favorites, which ones maybe I have, you know, second thoughts about whatever. I thought we could do that. And then I thought we could take the exact same group of books and rank them by their cover design because these are all books that I obviously really, really like or have really liked uh, when I read them. And some of them have great covers and some of them have not so great covers. So I don't know. I just thought this might be kind of a fun experiment. How, how would I rank these based on their content versus how would I rank them based on their cover? So I don't know. I thought this might be fun. So let's see how it goes. Okay, so we are looking at all of the books that I ranked. I did just realize that I accidentally put a Penny Reed in here that I thought I had had on my best of the year list, but did not in fact have. So we'll just not rank that one. The rest of these though stand. So some of these are going to be all time favorites. These are the books that I had on my best of the year list. So God tier, I'm gonna call like true, like all time favorites. Stand by it are ones that like, yeah, I still feel like these were, you know, they ranked, they merited being best of the year kind of a thing. Uh, on the bubble are ones of like, hey, you know, in a different year, this may not have made the list. And regret would be any of these that I feel like in retrospect, I would not call it a, a best of the year. Uh, and I, I don't know, maybe I won't have any of those. Maybe that will be all of them. We'll find out. So let's get into it. So first of all, I've got A Heart and a Body in the World. It is one of my very all-time favorite YA contemporaries. So for that reason, I kind of feel like it's got to be in God tier because it is a favorite of its kind. We're just, we'll, we'll go with that. Uh, all Systems Red, no duh, that is a God tier for sure. All the Single Ladies by Rebecca Traister is one that I still really like. Like I stand by it in terms of this is a good book. Best of, the, it would not have made a top 10 best of the year in a different year. So I'm just gonna put that as on the bubble because I think that reflected that that year didn't have as many like fantastic things that I read in it kind of a thing. Uh, and then Aiedi by Roxane Gay uh, is one of my all time favorite short story collections. So I will put that in God tier. Catch and Kill is fantastic. I definitely stand by that. Now, granted, some of these ones that I've ranked in 2019 are probably biased towards standing by because the least amount of time has passed, but whatever. Uh, Dread Nation, stand by it. Really enjoyed that. Need to make some time to get to the sequel someday. Eichmann in Jerusalem, uh, another one, stand by it. Mm, it is one of my favorite nonfiction philosophy kind of things. I'm gonna just go with stand by it, but it's it was on the cusp. Eloquent Rage, stand by it. Gray Sister, I stand by that one. This represents the several Mark Lawrence books I read that year. Um, and I would stand by any of them belonging in a top 10 list because they're really good. How to Be Safe, I'm just gonna say this is on the bubble just because I don't think about it as often as I thought I would. I do still really, kind of similar to all the single ladies. Really good, I don't regret it, but more on the bubble than some of these other ones. Hunger is an all-time favorite book, so we got two Roxanne Gays up here. And let's see, Iron and Magic, I would definitely stand by that one. I think it was really good, yeah. Uh, we're skipping the Penny Reed one because I accidentally pulled it into this file. Whoops, my bad. No Visible Bruises. I stand by that one. One Fell Sweep. So this is the Innkeeper Chronicle series from Alona Andrews, and I do really like that series as a whole. I would say, though, I would put this kind of on the bubble. I know, controversial for an Alona Andrews pick, but I got to be honest. Um, I think that it's good, like unquestionably really good. And I really recommend that series as a whole, but in terms of 
I think if I had read that in a different year, I don't know that it would have made my overall top 10 of the year list. I think it probably would have just made the SFF top 10 list. So there you go. Oops, sorry. Um, Red Sister. Oh, I read these in two different years. So you know what? I'm going to move Grey Sister up to God tier just because it is my favorite of that trilogy and that trilogy is one of my all-time favorites. Red Sister I'll put as a stand, stand by it kind of thing. Sapphire Flames, stand by that one. We've got multiple <laughs> Alona Andrews uh, uh, appearances here. She said, yeah, I stand by that one. I think I have that one as tied with Catch and Kill. I kind of thought of them as one reading experience. Sleeping Murder by Agatha Christie, I think has to go to God tier because it is a top 10 Agatha Christie for me and Agatha Christie is my all time favorite author. So I think just like kind of by definition, it probably belongs in God tier. That seems right. Uh, then we've got, so you want to talk about race? Oh yeah, I had that tied with White Fragility that year. I'm kind of on the bubble with both of those. I think they're both really, really good. Yeah, you know what? Take, I take that back. I stand by those. Those are really good, like, practical nonfiction picks of, like, how to do something. In this case, like, not being asshole about race. Um, but <laughs> I think they're really practical books that deal with like the philosophical underpinnings associated with them very well. So I'll stand by that. Uh, Stamp from the Beginning is an all time favorite nonfiction pick for me. So I feel like that is definitely God tier. Austin Playbook between Stand By It and God tier for this one. I'm gonna go with Stand By It just because the last couple of years have been really strong years for romance for me. And I just, I don't know that I think about it as much a year later as I thought I might, even though it's really good and I really recommend it. Wow, that was kind of surprising. Okay, so we'll go with that. Uh, the Broken Girls, I would put a God tier because it's one of my favorite like mystery thrillery kind of things that I've ever read. Um, I think and talk a lot about the library at Mount Char, so I feel like that's probably a god tier, uh, as is The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, that series, because I think and talk about that one a lot. Uninhabitable Earth, I would say I stand by, and same for Trail of Lightning. Um, same for Trainwreck, I think. Uh, yeah, same for Trainwreck. Treachery and Death is a god tier because it's my favorite in my favorite, one of my favorite series. So I think again, definitionally, it has to be there. Wait for it by Mariana Zapata. You know, I'm gonna say it's on the bubble because in a different year, I don't know that it would have made the ultimate top 10 list. Again, I think all but How to Be Safe came from 2017. And 2017 had a lot of like fine reading for me, but I didn't have a lot of just like loved it kind of things. A couple, we'll, we'll get there in a second. But yeah, so I'm gonna leave that there. White Trash, uh, I don't regret. I think, yeah, it's not even on the bubble. I mean, that was really solid. It's a history of um, the white underclass in the US and it's really good. Why We Get Fat is an all-time favorite book for me. Um, and Wildfire by Lonnie Andrews is also an all-time favorite book for me. So uh, I think I'm happy to report I do not regret any of my top 10 picks from any of these years, so that's good. I do have a few that I think were probably weaker picks, but most of these are like, yeah, I stand by it. And uh, a good number of all-time favorite books that I found since starting BookTube, so that's really exciting. Okay, so that is our first tier list. Now we're going to use the same group of books uh, and see how they rank as cover design and not as books in and of themselves. So now we have the same group of books, but we're just gonna rank them by the cover. And this time, you know what, we'll just go ahead and leave that Penny Read one in, cause why not? So first, A Heart and a Body in the World, I think is a really like nice cover design. I don't know that it's like the most memorable thing ever, but I think it's different, it's graphic, it's memorable. So I'm gonna say that one's nice. Oh, I didn't tell you what my tears were. I mean, you can see them right here, but uh, we're going from gorgeous to yuck. And yuck is, this is an entirely subjective opinion uh, based on my own personal preferred aesthetic preferences. 
so different people will disagree. I probably have more grace for some of the like more genre-y ones than other people would. I don't know. We'll find out. Okay, so I'm going to say that one's nice. I think that the All Systems Red cover is gorgeous. And I think it's completely, like, it's one of those covers that I think really evokes the mood of the book really well. I love the cover, like, the artwork on all, um, all of these books in the Murder Bot Dyer series. All the Single Ladies, I would say, is fine. I don't think it's very memorable, but I think it kind of gets the job done. I think the Aidi one is really pretty, but it's like, again, sort of like a heart and a body in the world, like pretty, but not revolutionary or super memorable. I think the Catch and Kill one, though, is gorgeous and I think is very memorable. Like it's very, it kind of reminds me of um, of like the Hitchcocky kind of graphics. I think it's it's super cool. Dread Nation, I also think, has a really gorgeous and very evocative cover. It's going to be interesting to see like if I have, if we can pick out trends for me. Um, this, okay, I've been in Jerusalem. This cover, I'm going to say is meh, just because I think it's just kind of blah. Um, Penguin has other much better classic designs for their covers, I think. Uh, I'm going to say the same for Eloquent Rage. I think I get for nonfiction sometimes they just have the title, but it's just kind of boring. I don't know. It's not my favorite. Gray Sister, I'm between nice and gorgeous. I'm going to say Grey Sister I'm going to put in Gorgeous because I really, really love the artwork in this series. Um, this I just think is really beautiful. Uh, I like it better than I like the Red Sister one. Where is that? Red Sister I'm just going to put as nice because I think the Grey Sister one is like the peak of that style of artwork in the series. How to Be Safe I think is another really nice one. I just don't think it's especially memorable, so I'm not going to give it full marks, but I think it's really pretty. Um, I, I like it. And same for Hunger. I think that it's a really simple cover design. It's just like the fork, but I think the simplicity works, and it's something I think more memorable than some of the other nonfiction picks on this list. So I'm going to put that as nice. Iron and Magic is hard because I personally am okay with the Alona Andrews covers. I know some people really don't like any of their covers. For me, it's okay. Um, I get why it's not for everyone. I wouldn't put it as a yuck, but I know a lot of other people probably would, but I think they're fine. Uh, I would say this iteration of the Penny Reed cover is fine. I personally prefer the updated covers. Again, I know other people really disagree. Uh, no Visible Bruises, I'm gonna say is meh. It's going for the kind of minimalism that Hunger has, but I don't think it has the same sort of graphic element. Like, you can't tell from this little square, but it has like this hunch in the wall because it's a book, a nonfiction book about domestic violence. So I think it's going for the same idea of what Hunger does, but I just don't think it does it quite as well. So there we go. One Fell Swoop. Uh, again, I'm just going to put it in meh because it's a cartoony version of a cover that I think is fine. Do I, which of these do I... I'm going to say maybe actually I kind of like One Fell Sweep a little bit better than Iron Magic. I'm going to say it's fine. It's a different type of... Like when you're self-pubbing, you have a different kind of resource pool or graphic design sensibility than the major publishers do. I don't know. I'm going to put Sapphire... Like I'm thinking about this because I'm going to say Sapphire Flames and the other alone, another Alona Andrews one is fine to me too. Like if there, you're going to have people on a romance novel cover... I prefer it to be this version of having people on the romance novel cover. Uh, so I think it's fine. She said, I think is again, fine. Um, but it's just, no, I'm going to go with man because it's just like the words and it's a nonfiction pick and I just wish they would get a little more creative sometimes. Like Catch and Kill has a gorgeous cover. I think there's ways to do nonfiction cover design that is more interesting than just the title and the author's names. So um, Sleeping Murder, I'm going to put as nice. Like, I really like this line of Agatha Christie cover design. This is the paperback version um, that you're looking at. And it's kind of, um, it's got hand-drawn elements to it. And it usually is very simple. And for me, I really, again, kind of maybe like the Hunger cover, that tends to work pretty well for me, where it's just like a simple image, elegant minimalism, let's say. So you want to talk about race, I'm going to say is just eh, meh. Uh, in contrast, to stand from the beginning, 
I can't quite go gorgeous, but I think it's nice. This is another good example of nonfiction cover design done well, where I think this outline of a silhouette of someone's face and then like juxtaposed with the title and the kind of ev evocation of blood with the red, I think, I think that's a really striking cover image. The Austin Playbook, um, I'm between fine and meh because I think, again, I'm going to go with fine. If you're going to have two people, like two live actors on your cover for a romance, I think this is a better version of that. I like that it's not a clinch where it's like weird. I don't know. That's judgmental. I just don't really like, I just don't really like the super clinchy romance novel covers. It's not for me. The Broken Girls by Simone St. James. I'm between nice and fine because I do think it's, I'm going to go with nice actually because I think for a book of its kind, this is a better cover than some of these books get, I think. I will say in general, Simone St. James has a nice, like all of her books, I feel like have had nice cover treatments to them. So whoever is doing her covers is doing a good job, I think. The Library at Mount Char, uh, I do really like the cover design in this. I'm going to go with gorgeous and I'm going to say partially it's gorgeous to me because I really do like that it kind of is a weird cover and you're not totally sure what the book is going to be like and then the book is a weird book so it merits that. The Naturals I think is a nice another example of kind of like a simple image with a cover design that I think is really effective and each of the books has sort of like one uh, it's like an object cover. I Yeah maybe that's the the thing we're learning. I do tend to like object covers here. Uh, the Uninhabitable Earth, I'm gonna say is fine. It You can't see it in the square, but there's like a dead bee below it. So I think it evokes the, um, well, no, I'm gonna say it's meh. I think they could have done better. Trail of Lightning is one of the most beautiful covers I've ever seen. And part of what makes it beautiful, you can't tell in the picture, but it has this like foiled treatment on it that is really beautiful. Trainwreck, I think is more interesting than some of these other nonfiction picks. So I'm going to put it as fine. It's not great, but it, it gets the job done, I think. The in-death books, I am not wild. I'm not really wild about these in-death book covers, man. I got to tell you. Um, I think that they are well branded. And for that reason, I'm going to say they're fine. I think that they have a very clear branding story now. So good on them for making that work. But they probably could have done better. Wait for it, I'm gonna say it is a fine approach to a romance novel cover. It's more abstract. It's not memorable, but I think that I personally would prefer that over a clinch. White Fragility, I think is meh. It's another one of those kind of bland nonfiction covers, as is White Trash. Also, I like having these two next to each other because they're contrasting, so. Why We Get Fat, I think is fine. It's got, again, it's a nonfiction pick with a single object on it conveying some of what the book is about so I think it does that pretty well and wildfire I don't think I can quite go for a yuck because it's not a full clench but it's too clenchy for me so I'm gonna put it in math so here you go um these are how I would rank my favorite books just purely based on their covers and again I don't have any that I think are awful but definitely a different skewing, I think, and a different distribution ratio when I look at their aesthetics versus their actual content. I think my takeaway here is that unless there's something, I mean, I guess in my gorgeous, I do have one of them, I have four that have somebody on it. But I think I'm what we've learned is I'm pickier. If you're going to have an actual character on the cover, it has to be memorable in a way to me that is harder to do than if you go kind of a different design route. I guess is the takeaway here. Alrighty, so that is my uh, follow up tier ranking video. Kind of a, a weird concept, but I thought this might be kind of fun. Uh, I guess we'll just, we'll, I'll flash up here, maybe a comparison between how I ended up ranking things. And yeah, I don't think that there's a strong correlation, it looks like, between God tier books and their covers, but now we know. We wondered, did you wonder? I didn't really wonder all that much. In theory, I wondered, and now I can tell you definitively that, yeah, there's not not that strong of a correlation. So anyway, let me know maybe what uh, one of your favorite books from the ones I talked about is and what one of your favorite covers based on the ones I talked about is. And I think that that will do it for now. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meets if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will
will do it. I hope you are having an absolutely lovely day today, and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!